this fellowship uh, is uh, in our second year running. Um, and um, right now the, um, the, the major, you know, the, the major rotations are with uh, Dr. Chris Schmidt and uh, Dean Saterianos. Um, and uh, over the last, I've been involved with the fellowship uh, since um, the beginning. Um, uh, but other ancillary staff include um, myself and Pat McMahon. Um, and um, it's a pretty comprehensive fellowship uh, that um, encompasses uh, both shoulder and elbow, uh, which I think is one of the main strong suits of our fellowship. The fellowship was really started by Chris Schmidt. Chris was, Chris was the one who really had the vision for it. And then uh, he recruited uh, Dean Satirianis, myself, and Albert Lynn, and I was delighted to be part of it. I think it's uh, a great opportunity for people, and it's enjoyable for me as well. Our fellowship has uh, four shoulder and elbow specialists, all of whom do things uh, somewhat differently. And uh, I think that's a real strength of the program. Whenever you're working with different people, you'll notice that they do some things differently and some things the same. And the things that they do the same probably are the important things. So uh, it really gives you an opportunity to uh, get an idea of the things that you probably ought to do the same as these guys do. And then the things that people do differently, well, there's a little latitude there in how you want to do them. The fellows get a lot of good exposure to um, arthroscopic and open surgery, um, both of the uh, shoulder and the elbow. Um, and there's also a large um, core curriculum component, education um, conference, um, uh, which is a very, um, uh, a very, um, organized uh, schedule um, and uh, every Monday um, we get together as a group um, uh, with uh, lectures a core curriculum uh, with Chris Schmidt, Dean, myself, um, Pat McMahon, uh, the fellows um, and we go through essentially an entire curriculum of shoulder and elbow. Um, this is combined also with journal clubs, um, cadaveric labs uh, and then research as well so um, so we're really uh, trying to make a very comprehensive um, uh, uh, fellowship. This uh, fellowship will prepare you to take care of any problem uh, in the shoulder, the elbow, and a lot of hand problems. So you're uh, going to be adept at performing all the uh, surgeries that need to be done. And that's not only the common surgeries, but uh, even some of the very uncommon surgeries. In addition, if you want to go into academics, uh, we all have contacts uh, and know. Uh, the other shoulder surgeons uh, around the country and contacts with academic programs so we can help you uh, have a position uh, of that type. And certainly we've all worked in academics, some of us currently uh, do, um, and uh, so we can teach you how to navigate uh, through um, the different parts of being an academic physician or a, uh, a community physician. I think this fellowship is uh, primarily clinical, but there is uh, opportunities for research. Uh, all of us have written a lot of articles and we presented it, uh, you know, all of the, all the big meetings. So I think that really the sky's the limit. You can do as much research as you want, both clinical research and basic science research. Um, and uh, that's really up to you. I mean, I think we have a, for, I think the fellows here get a really wide um, depth of, um, uh, clinical experience, um, experience in the OR, um, uh, a lot of hands-on experience. Um, and I think it's, there's a good mix of, of kind of years and experience. Um, uh, you know, Dean's been in practice the longest. Um, uh, Chris has been in practice for quite some time. Uh, I've been in practice for almost 10 years. Um, Pat McMahon has also been in practice for a long time. And I think the and the way we interact with each other is great. We're very collegial. Um, and I think that comes across a lot in our conferences. We have excellent discussions. Um, we kind of challenge each other on things. Um, all of us are pretty well published um, uh, in our respective fields. And so I really think the, uh, like the clinical experience, the educational experience, the research, um, I think it's just a very well-rounded um, fellowship. And so, um, and Pittsburgh obviously is, the best city so Pittsburgh uh, has been called America's most livable city and there's some truth to that one of the great things about Pittsburgh was it was once a big city and as a result of that 
it has a lot of the uh, social advantages of big cities. It has a ballet, an orchestra, in addition to the athletics that you probably know about. And those things are very accessible. So you can get tickets to the uh, opera or to the uh, symphony or to the ballet. And in addition, uh, in this fellowship, you're going to a number of different locations and it's relatively easy to get to those different places. You're not gonna sit in a lot of traffic or have a lot of difficulty getting from place to place. So Pittsburgh is a, it's a nice place to spend a year and see a lot of uh, different things. And uh, like I say, it makes it easy to get around and do this fellowship. Uh, one of the other things that, um, that you need to look for in a fellowship is having strong mentors. Um, uh, because, you know, no matter what you do, I mean, whether it's being an expert in the community, um, being, um, you know, wanting to, uh, to serve in sort of a higher, higher level academically in research or societies and committees, um, you need strong mentors to guide you there. Um, certainly the first couple of years of practice are always very challenging um, when you no longer have somebody to you know, to, to back you up uh, in the OR, it's just you. Um, and, you know, you get yourself, uh, you know, see difficult cases, uh, maybe something you've never seen before, something you need, you know, a real um, expert opinion on. And that's, you know, that's, that's one, you know, uh, one reason having a strong mentor helps. I mean, you call these people, we're all very accessible, um, uh, very approachable. Um, and I get these calls all the time from prior fellows of mine. Hey, I got to you know, Dr. Lin, I got a tough case. I, I, I uh, just want to talk to you about it. Think this through. Um, we're, you know, we wouldn't get into this business unless that's something we're passionate about. Uh, mentorship is lifelong and the relationship is too. Uh, the uh, American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery is a, uh, the meeting is a good time for us to get together. We attend that frequently. And in addition, the American Children and Elbow Surgeon meeting in, is uh, held every year in the fall. And uh, those meetings give us an opportunity to meet and uh, catch up um, as the years go by. And this is what I learned in my training. I uh, did my fellowship at Curlin and Job Orthopedic Clinic, and I speak to those guys uh, uh, frequently. I review cases with them. And uh, I see that as a uh, passing of the baton that I would hope that uh, you would do that as well. Ultimately, you know, you get to delve into the mind of the attending that you're working with. So how does this person think in clinic about problems? How does a person bill? How does this person interact with patients? You know, what is their style running their clinic and how do they, you know, how do they interact or, or, um, uh, or get their team to work most efficiently for them? Um, I think all of these things, and of course, surgical techniques and, and preferences and, um, and like kind of really delving into that and really understanding that is important because ultimately what's going to happen is you take all of these things, you know, hey, maybe I like the way Dr. Lin does this, but I like the way Dr. Schmidt does this. I like the way Dr. Saturianus does this. You're never going to kind of completely like everything about how somebody does things, but the, you know, in fellowship, if you really get a true, like a true understanding of those type of things, then you can kind of take little bits and pieces and make that into your own type of practice, or at least you start that way, and then you can figure out how to evolve it into the way that works for you.